When Mao Zedong came to power, he began a long struggle of trying to revolutionize China. Eager for change, Mao saw opportunity in a large and easily moldable group, China's youth. As he worked to form an ideologically pure nation, Mao found fault in the Chinese education system. He saw intellectuals as a threat to society. Accordingly, he believed that the traditional schooling methods must be wiped out, calling them exceedingly destructive to people. The CCP saw a brief period of success in education right after Mao came to power in 1949. Mao promised to minimize illiteracy across China. In 1955, the PRC adopted Pinyin, a modernized form of Mandarin which made learning to read and write much easier. Through this change, as well as the party system of education, China's literacy rate more than tripled between 1949 and 1976, but this educational success was short-lived. The Sent Down Movement was made official in December 1968 when Chairman Mao stated in his speech that it is very necessary for the urban educated youth to go to the countryside to be re-educated by the poor farmers. From 1967 until the Sent Down Movement ended in 1978, 17 million urban youth from birth cohorts 1946 to 1961, or about one-tenth of the urban population, were sent down to rural areas. Most sent down youth were forced to do hard manual work in the field for as long as 12 hours a day and 7 days a week. Some were sent to the poor distant parts of the country and were allowed to visit their urban homes only every three years. In 1962, Mao launched the Socialist Education Movement. Part of this movement involved a call for revolutionary successors, a theme that would gain importance later during the Cultural Revolution. Young people were seen as less corrupted by non-revolutionary elements. In a document warning against following the same path as the Soviet Union, Mao laid out criteria for what he called worthy successors. He believed that the future revolutionary leaders of China must be trained not by the party, but by Mao himself. In the midst of a call to abolish formal education, many students were being encouraged to attend English schools. Despite a claim that the nation was wholeheartedly opposed to U.S. imperialism, communication and trade with the West was crucial to China's modernization, and many children were educated in Western languages. At the start of the Cultural Revolution, all primary schools in urban China were closed for two to three years, and secondary and tertiary level institutions were closed for much of that period. When some schools reopened from 1968 to 1969, Teachers were not allowed to follow the standard curriculum, and instead, students were asked to study Mao's thought and learn farming and manual labor from peasants and workers. As part of this new curriculum, students were taught an untraditional way of behaving. In physical education classes, children were taught to be violent and aggressive. Mao told students that it was right to rebel against teachers if the students were not satisfied. China's youth were being raised to be revolutionaries. Education was not meant to teach a formal curriculum, but rather the ideology of Mao. Many of the young people no longer in school focused instead on serving Mao by joining the Red Guard. The Red Guard was a movement of Chinese youth who worked to implement the aims of the Cultural Revolution. They often used violent means. In carrying out Mao's wish to destroy formal education, they attacked intellectuals. Here, they are shown at a book burning, adhering to Mao's belief that books petrify your mind. They also struggled against school teachers, even beating up their own former teachers at times. Although Mao's leadership of China saw major advances in education by the middle of the 1960s, the final decade of Mao's life had most of the gains in education being completely squandered. A census compiled in 1982, six years after Mao's death, contained the following revealing figures. Fewer than 1% of the working population of China had a university degree, only 11% had received schooling after the age of 16, and only 26% had received schooling between the ages of 12 and 16. The disruption caused by the Cultural Revolution resulted in a sharp decline in qualified youngsters in China. Between 1966 and 1970, 130 million of China's young people simply stopped attending school or university. Another reason that the Cultural Revolution disrupted the schooling process was that learning and study were dismissed as worthless unless they served the revolution. In terms of formally educating the people of China, Mao's education policies were a clear failure, but providing a strong formal education to his people was never Mao's goal. That form of education was an obstacle to what Mao truly wanted, which was an ideologically pure nation. In terms of this goal, he was fairly successful. 
While there were those who were opposed to Mao's ideology, they were usually forced into submission. Dissent was especially rare among China's youth. Measures such as closing schools and giving immense power to the Red Guard successfully led young people to conform to his ideology.